Hi, in the last video, we discussed the influence caffeine has on potential muscle growth through its improvement of lifting performance. I'd highly recommend you check out that video, but to be honest, it isn't required this time around. However, at the end of that video, I offered two questions that you might've had at the end of my conclusion. First, can a person consume less caffeine and get the same positive effects? Second, are certain individuals with particular genetic anomalies not able to get a positive performance effect from caffeine? Well, we're going to answer both of those questions here. This study that we'll be using to find these answers recruited 22 young, moderately resistance trained men, much like the last study researchers did. One group of participants was assigned to consume a placebo supplement, which did not contain caffeine. The other group, had the pleasure, although it was unbeknownst to them, of consuming the caffeine supplement at a concentration of three milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So if they weighed 80 kilograms, they'd be consuming 240 milligrams of caffeine. Now they used a series of different measurements, but will be focused on their ability to lift weight for a set number of repetitions. They had the participants come in and perform a one repetition maximum, which is just lifting a weight of an exercise like a bench press for one repetition until you find the weight that you can barely lift with good form. That is your maximum weight for one repetition, hence the creative but thankfully easy one rep max. From there, the researchers calculated 85% of each person's one rep max and had them lift that weight for as many repetitions as possible. For example, if a person could lift 100 kilograms on the bench press for their one rep max, the researchers for the actual measurement portion of the study loaded 85 kilograms and had them lift that weight as many times as possible. Now, before we look at the results, I'd like to thank our sponsor for today's video. Absolutely no one. But there is one more aspect that answers the second question, the genetic aspect to caffeine effectiveness. So bear with me. Your liver is the primary site of caffeine metabolism, and those liver cells contain your genetic material. In that genetic material is a gene that contains the information for an enzyme known as cytochrome P450. That enzyme metabolizes caffeine, meaning it binds to it and converts it to another molecule that is not active like caffeine. Now, some people are fast caffeine metabolizers and others are slow caffeine metabolizers. Those that are fast tend to have a particular version of this P450 enzyme that is slightly mutated, causing it to be highly effective at metabolizing caffeine. This is known as the double A polymorphism. On the other hand, slow metabolizers have a different mutation to their P450 enzyme that reduces its ability to metabolize caffeine, known as the AC polymorphism. Hopefully I explained that well enough. AA mutations lead to a faster caffeine metabolism and AC mutations lead to a slower caffeine metabolism. Knowing that, the researchers tested all the participants for which gene mutation they had by doing a simple swab and ran a genetic test to find out where everybody stood. We'll then be able to see if caffeine affects those two populations differently in their performance. Okay, enough. Let's look at the results. Again, the researchers took a bunch of different measures from cycling to power output among others, but we're focused on the repetitions accomplished on the bench press. They supply this giant chart with a bunch of numbers, but I just took those numbers and made a graph because well, it's just easier to digest. Here, we're looking at the caffeine versus no caffeine, but with the additional stratification based on slow caffeine metabolizers and fast caffeine metabolizers. Generally, participants were able to lift between six and nine repetitions of their respective 85% one rep max. So what do we see? We see, and at least I see, and I think you will too if you just drink the Kool-Aid, that caffeine consumption led to an increase in the number of repetitions lifted. It isn't drastic, but about one additional repetition was gained with caffeine consumption. However, interestingly, there was no gene effect, meaning statistically speaking, if we compare the performance of the slow metabolizers to the performance of the fast metabolizers, there is no difference. Taken together, this study shows us that the answer to our two questions 
One, we can still experience a benefit to lifting performance as measured by total volume or the number of repetitions lifted, even with a lower caffeine intake. Two, if you metabolize caffeine quickly or slowly, it doesn't matter. You'll experience a benefit regardless. But here we are, discussing data, and while that's all useful and offers us fantastic insight, I hope you're the kind of person that has an unquenchable thirst for knowledge, like me. So if you're curious as to how caffeine has these effects in your body, as well as some added nuance to everything that we've discussed here, I'd encourage that you check out the next video in the series, or watch one of my others. With that, I appreciate you stopping by, and I'll speak with you on the other side. Bye.